Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Anna and today I want to show you how to scrape or gather data from a website using Python. I'm going to use Beautiful Soap Library. If you're interested in other libraries for web scraping, please follow the link. I recently made a video, so let's go. Okay, again, what is web scraping? Web scraping is a process of automatically downloading data displayed by a website. And you may ask, why do we need that? And I will tell you. Scraping product details can help your company to improve the product and make price comparison. Collecting and scraping data from search engines and social media can help your company to understand feedback and improve reputation. Are you interested in investing? It's possible to scrape, gather some news and analyze the trends. Your company wants to get more clients? Just gather some contact details and send potential clients your offer. So as you see, whatever the company does, it has own purpose of collecting some data. Today imagine that you're going to produce sneakers or your company is producing shoes and you want to list your product on the internet, let's say on the Zappos site. So you need to analyze and estimate your competitors and understand what price is the best. So, as you already understood, we're going to scrape Zappos website. So firstly, let's move to the Jupyter Notebook. Uh, we need to install Beautiful Soap library if you haven't installed already. Installing Beautiful Soap is easiest if you have pip or uh, another Python installer. So you just need to write in the terminal uh, pip install beautiful soap. Also we need request module uh, to send some HTTP request. So for this reason we're also installing request. Okay, next step. Let's import needed libraries. Import requests. From BS4 we import beautiful soap library. Now we need to save our URL or link to a variable but to do this, we need to open Zappos website and find their sneakers because we want to analyze price for this product. Okay, what do we see? We see there is not only one page, page of sneakers. Do we need data only from one page or from all the pages? Correct, we need all the data. So, by clicking on the next page, the link also is changing. So we are able to see the number of the page. That means that we easily can access data on every page by changing the number at the end of the link. We may use for loop to iterate over a sequence. So now with the help of format, we can concatenate the number of the page. So for this reason, we are writing dot format i. Now let's send get request and save the receive to the variable response. Whenever we make a request, it returns a response object. Now this response object will be used to access content. So for this reason, we are writing response.content and it returns the content of the response in bytes. Next step, we need to copy HTML page that we want to scrape. So we need to pass this content to beautiful soup, writing soup equals beautiful soup content. As we have 112 pages, we need to collect them somewhere. So we may create empty list that calls, for example, items items. Oh, we will append uh, HTML copy of each page every time at the end of the cycle with the help of dot append. Now let's try to understand where needed information is located on the website. Again, what do we need? We need uh, the description of the item, for example, name, some colors or other description, price. And also we need to have a link to this item on the site. So we go to Zappos site, click right button to inspect. And now we see the same HTML code that we already copied to our Jupyter notebook. I should say that visible part of HTML document is between uh, body and slash body tag. 
every tag serves a block inside a web page. Every tag has a name and some attributes, for example, ref or ID or class. As we see, every item is in article tag and needed information is in tag A. And here is a ref, which actually is a link and the description here as a text. So knowing this, we may start to parse data and to proceed our script faster, let's write uh, the script only for the first HTML page. Uh, so we need to slice the list that we have just created. And after we write the correct code, we will process it for every page in this uh, list. So the simplest way to navigate the, this code is to say the name of the tag you want. We know that our information is in tag A, so using A name as an attribute, I mean writing soup.a, will give us only the first tag by that name. But we need not only the first tag, we need all of the tags. So for this reason, we are using find all. So let's write find all A, class. We can find the name of the class in HTML code. And now we receive all A tags. We have a list of A tags, so we need to use for loop to get each link from each tag. As we know, URL is a part of HTML tag, so we can get it by writing ref. So as you see, it's not a full link, so we need to add string before this part of the ref to get a full link. HTTP zappos.com, the part that is missed. store these links into list. Now it's time to get a description. As we already discussed, the description is stored as a text uh, inside the text. So to get such type of, con of content, we may use a uh, text. We are getting a string in which we have name of sneakers, color, and then price. Uh, we may split this string by dot. As we see, name is the first or zero element of this list. Color is the next one. So we may save these elements to the list by slicing. Mm -hmm. But what to do with the price? As we see, each price starts with a dollar symbol. So to get this price, uh, I offer you to use regular expressions. Regular expression specifies a set of strings that matches it. So the function in this module let you check if a particular string matches a given regular expression. price starts with dollars, so we use row string notation for regular expression patterns. Uh, the first symbol should be dollar. Next we have two digits, we may specify them as brackets 0 to 9. Then we have plus sign, which means one or more repetition of digit. Then we have dot, because dot splits cents. And again, digits. Or we also may specify digits as slash D as sign, which means that one or more repetition. And where we are finding this regular expression pattern in our text, in our description.
So as you see, some item also has MRP price, but we need only the first one. So when we use slicing to get the first element of the list, and don't forget that we did this code only for the first HTML page, but we have the list of such pages. So let's process the script uh, for every page um, with the help, of course, of for loop. At the end, we received four lists with names, with links, with prices, and with a description. So, for this, we may create data frame by using pandas. For this reason, we need to import also pandas library. Uh, to concatenate the, this list, we may use zip function. And don't forget to name columns when we are creating data frames. So we're using data frame function. And let's name our columns. Name, link, price, and description. As you see, we received data frame with 11,200 rows and four columns. Based on this data, we may uh, analyze our product, make some price comparison, etc. So guys, uh, thank you for being with me today and I hope it was useful for you. If you have some other questions or you want to discuss other topics, please write them in the comments and I will be thankful for your subscription, for likes, for comments. So thank you so much for watching this video up to the very end and see you soon!